Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is John Cruikshank. I'm the mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to introduce and acknowledge the people that we have here in attendance. Of course, uh, representing our 66 assembly district is our assembly member, Al Marasucci. From the great city of Rolling Hills Estates, we have their mayor, Velva Schmidt, Mayor Pro Tem Debbie Stagura, Council Member Brett Huff, Council Member Pam Brown Schachter, and of course their City Manager Greg Grammer. From Rolling Hills, we have their Mayor Leah Mersch, and also Council Member Pat Wilson. And also joining them is their City Manager Karina Banales. Finally, our last of our sister cities, we have Palos Verdes Estates. We have Mayor Don Murdoch. We have their interim city manager, Carrie Kelman. And then of course, we have our partners at Los Angeles County Fire Department. We have Assistant Fire Chief Brian Kane. And Community Service Liaison, Rosemarie Vivero. And finally, from our city, and I don't see my colleague, Dave Bradley, he was going to join us, but he's not here yet. But we have uh, with us um, from the emergency preparedness is Tamara Himmelstein. And I wanted to say about that, that the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, this great idea that we're, we're going to be talking about and introducing today was really brought to us by our emergency planning committee. Um, one of the great things about any city is that you know, it's not just the city council and city staff, but you have a lot of great volunteers. And in our city, we do have an emergency planning committee. And this whole idea was brought to our city council by our emergency planning committee. And, and you know, it's something that you'll hear more about from the experts at Pano AI, but we were really happy that they brought this idea to us and we're really proud that we installed this. So with our vast open space and canyon areas, virtually the entire Palos Verdes Peninsula falls within the CAL FIRE designated very high fire hazard severity zone. Since the last wildfire on the peninsula, which was back in 2009, California's fire seasons have worsened in severity and we've endured two droughts, making our region even more vulnerable to wildfires. As we head into the fire prone summer months, the peninsula is now armed with a network of high mounted 360 degree Pano AI wildfire detection cameras that can detect, first detect the whisks, first whiffs of smoke and deliver real time fire images to first responders and emergency personnel. Three of the four camera stations are now operational and are regularly alerting emergency personnel to emergency wildfire. And now I'd like to introduce Sonia Kastner with Pano AI. Thank you so much, Mayor Crookshank, for having us here today. Um, thank you to all the mayors and um, uh, officials who are here to host us in this beautiful setting. Um, thank you so much uh, to Assemblymember uh, Marisucci for uh, leading the charge and making this uh, project possible. Um, and finally, thank you to, uh, to Chief Kane for actually using the technology because uh, cameras and AI cannot put out fires, it turns out. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Sonia Kastner. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Pano AI. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the company and then uh, turn it over to my colleague Lizzie to explain the, the technology and the program in more detail. Um, uh, we at Pano are a team of uh, 75 uh, team members. Our product, as you'll hear, is an end-to-end -end solution for early wildfire detection and intelligence. The cornerstone is a network of mountaintop and high vantage point cameras that we deploy. You can see one right behind you. Um, uh, we combine this with satellite data and other data, critical data feeds and artificial intelligence to detect and alert on the first signs of fire, both day and night. And this allows uh, fire agencies to uh, quickly mount an aggressive response and contain fires while they're still small. 
Uh, and, and from speaking with Chief Kane today, this is an essential part of, of uh, LA County and Rancho Palos Verdes firefighting strategy. Um, uh, those of us at Pano, uh, we are a group that includes both former firefighters as well as many uh, technologists that come from companies like Cisco, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple. Uh, and we came together because we believed that the uh, fire community on the front lines of this growing crisis deserve the best possible technology tools. There had already been uh, academic research for over 10 years now into the concept of taking cameras and putting them on mountaintops as a modern day version of a lookout tower. And we founded Pano as a commercial uh, uh, company backed by venture capital uh, to uh, build an end-to-end enterprise-grade solution that offers this completely turnkey to cities like Rancho Palos Verdes um, so that they can get the information they need to, uh, to, to take action and reduce risk. Uh, and uh, us as a company, we've been around for four years. We have dozens of customers. Uh, we're deployed across nine states in the United States, five states in Australia and British Columbia, uh, growing really rapidly. And we're just honored to be part of this partnership and, and continue to see uh, the impact we can have together. Uh, now let me please turn it over to my colleague Lizzie to share more. Hi everybody, thanks Sonia. My name's Lizzie Wilmarth and I work at Pano AI as an enterprise account executive, which means I get the pleasure of working with all the customers and seeing implementations like the one we're here to take in today. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the actual technology in case there are questions about that. So as Sonia mentioned, our product is meant to be an end-to-end -end solution with an excellent product at every step of the way. So we are way more than just cameras. It's a multifaceted offering that our company provides to towns such as RPV. So the first part of this offering, as mentioned, and as we can see above, are these cameras. You can also see this image right here of the cameras on the towers. So these are high def cameras that are rotating every 360 degrees every minute. So every minute, a panoramic, image is being taken that then gets uploaded to a cloud server that is scanned by AI. So we have a proprietary AI that is trained to look for the first signs of smoke. And it is very smart now. It can tell the difference between dust and clouds and smoke. But once the AI catches anything that they believe might be smoke, that then gets sent to a place that we have called the Pano Intelligence Center. That is a location that is staffed by humans 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that double check those alerts so that we aren't unnecessarily alerting the fire department <laughs> and then once a uh, situation has been confirmed to actually be a fire Pano will then contact the local responders like Chief Kane to give them the exact location of the fire as well as perhaps probably a video of the image so what we are trying to do with our precision and our accuracy is to be able to decrease the amount of time that is spent getting people to a fire to be able to fight the fire and we are often able to beat any calls to 911 by anywhere between 15 minutes or more, you know, it ranges, but we can often beat any call to 911 and then we're able to have people fighting the fire faster. And has already been said, you know, in this day and age with all the changes that are happening in the environment, this just becomes a more critical requirement of everybody. Um, let's see. So we actually had a fire that we were able to catch here, or we prevented a fire that we caught here last year in RPV. It was in August and there was a grasslands fire and our cameras were able to catch that fire and um, notify the emergency manager of RPV, notify the fire department and they were able to get to the fire. We were the first contact about the fire. We were the first notification that came in about it and they were able to minimize it and keep it from spreading. So that is our whole job is to help prevent catastrophic wildfires by catching them before they spread. 
Um, we're really honored that we have the chance to do that here in the four cities and for RPV. And we're very grateful that you guys have welcomed us here today. And we're really excited about working with this community moving forward. So I think I'll turn it back over to Mayor Crookshank now. Thank you all so much. Oh, how does it work at night? It scans for heat. Great question. Uh, thank you, Sonia and Lizzie, for that. That was wonderful information. You can see it's already up and running. Um, and I also want to thank, and their, their respective mayors are going to come up, but all four cities on the peninsula have uh, committed to this. They all four understand the importance of this. Not only are we dealing with other natural disasters, such as the landslide and other issues that you all know about, but uh, the other cities, Rolling Hills, Rolling Hills Estates, Palos Verdes Estates have all committed to this and they'll tell you about that. So with that, I'd like to introduce our, our fine assembly member, Al Murasuchi. He was generous enough to uh, get us $1.5 million to get this up and running for the next five years. And um, without further ado, we'll have our assembly member up. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Cruxshank. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Assemblymember Al Marissa, she proudly representing the Palos Verdes Peninsula and the South Bay in the California Legislature. I want to thank the cities of Rancho Palos Verdes, Rolling Hills Estates, Rolling Hills, and Palos Verdes Estates for their leadership in protecting the residents of the Palos Verdes community. We all know that uh, with the realities of climate change, we have seen every year getting hotter, the droughts getting longer, the conditions for wildfires getting worse, uh, not only uh, here in the South Bay, but throughout the state of California and around the world. And it's, uh, it is only fitting as we're learning about this technology, about Pano AI, taking advantage of innovation, taking advantage of artificial intelligence to provide the tools to our first responders, to our firefighters, to be able to protect our communities. Uh, it's, it's my privilege to be able to support the leadership and the local efforts of our cities representing our constituents in the Palos Verdes Peninsula to make sure that our communities are prepared and are protected. And so I'm, I'm very glad to be able to support this effort. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Crookshank. Well, of course, this is a team effort, and our team are the four cities on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. So with that, I'm going to invite my friend, Velvet Smith, Mayor, Rolling Hills Estates. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. It's a privilege to be here, and thank you for having us, and thank you for being here. Uh, one of the things that is unique to the peninsula is that the individuals that you see here choose to work collaboratively and effectively for the good of all of the four cities. Uh, that means with something as critical as Pano AI, our efforts create effective, efficient use of new technology within the peninsula. And so we're grateful for wonderful female founders who have creative ideas and build companies that help us uh, do something as critical as use technology to enhance safety. The minutes that are saved based on this technology, and I won't go into it too much because I'm a big AI fan and I could talk about it forever, but <laughs> this kind of stuff really saves lives and the ability for us to do that. Uh, I'm grateful for our assembly member who sees the benefit of this and fights for funding for us. And also really to my colleagues, uh, both all the volunteers in our cities and to, of course, Chief Kane and your team who come together to use something like this. So this is critical. It's a game changer. Living in a very high fire severity zone is serious. And, and for us, this, this is a huge uh, step that we can take to hopefully sell, save lives in the event of an emergency. And then lastly, I wanted to say that uh, harnessed correctly and, and bringing it together, technology can really help advance us. And I hope that this is a testament to a couple of things. One, how to work well with, with technology, and two, how to be productive, collaborative members of government who really get important things done. So with that, I want to introduce my friend, Mayor M Leah Mersch. Thank you, Galveth. And, um, it's really good to be here today <clears throat> with our assembly member, all the other elected officials, our first responders, and all the staffs, the 
the businesses, uh, the Pano AI, everybody that's integral in making um, this happen. We tend to think of emergency management in a worst case scenario. What we do in response when something bad has happened, whether it's a natural or a man-made disaster. The actions we take in response to any emergency, including coordinating and integrating all of the activities and resources available, are critical to saving lives and protecting property. Some of these services and resources are provided by the state, by the city, by vendors, and also located within our own community. But the four peninsula cities are grateful for all of the resources that may be available to us in the event of an emergency. And as been said here before, we work together to develop strategies that will produce the best possible outcomes for our communities during and following any disaster. But emergency management is not just about responding to a major event, but in prevention and preparation efforts as well. The Pano AI system that we're highlighting here today is a perfect example of a preventative effort that uses technology to help all of the peninsula cities with early detection and response to fires. All of us thank Assemblymember Martsuchi and the city of RPV for working together and making this wonderful technology available to our area. The individual cities have each implemented many of their own individual prevention strategies as well, including increased budgets for additional maintenance of city trees, um, installing the peninsula's first emergency siren and voice capable warning system, contributing city funds to the Peninsula Land Conservancy to be used for the abatement of dangerous and very highly flammable non-native non vegetation, and studies and proactive measures to reduce the land movement effects. But in the areas of prevention and preparation, personal responsibility must also play a major role. Residents and businesses on this peninsula are provided with abundant, valuable information and resources whoops, on how to respond, repair, prepare, and, uh, pre and plan to an, for an emergency. An annual Peninsula Safety Expo, fire department inspections, information and links on all of our city's websites, town halls, neighborhood meetings, reminders to sign up for notifications through South Bay Alerts, videos demonstrating how to harden our homes and proper maintenance of vegetation on our properties are just a few examples of the many resources available to the public to educate them and assist them with their plans. But all of these resources and information are only effective to the extent that the public understands the importance of utilizing the information to develop their own individual family emergency plans. And these plans don't have to be difficult. They can be very simple and basic, but you have to make them. If civic leaders and the media continue to spread and reinforce that message, and if we're successful in getting more residents to prepare and develop their own plans, that might be one of the most value compo valuable components of any emergency management system there is. Now I'd like to introduce Don Murdoch, the mayor of the beautiful city of Palos Verdes Estates. Thank you. I want to start off by thanking RPV for coming to the Regional Emergency Preparedness Committee with the idea of the Pano AI system. And for my colleagues and staff working on that committee who vetted and did all of the work to bring that to fruition. I'd also like to thank Assemblyman Meritsuchi for providing the funding for this critical resource. As Mayor Schmitz mentioned earlier, we live in a very severe fire hazard zone. Having extra precious minutes of notification to allow evacuation is critical to saving our residents as well as protecting their property. And so that's very important to us. We've got very limited evacuation routes. We're abutted by the ocean, which is great, but you can't exit that way. And so with that, there comes the need to have great preparation and advance warning before an emergency strikes. Equally important to early notification of wildfires, though, is doing intentional building within the area and being careful about how much additional housing we are putting here and the number of cars we are putting on these roads 
where it, for my city there's like two streets there's one this way and one that way and that's it and so I also appreciate every all the work that Assemblyman Meritsuchi has done in trying to help address that increasing pressure for densifying our cities and for leaving uh, control of understanding of where it's good and where it's safe to do building and where it's not and trying to return that control back to our city. With that, I believe I turn it back over to Mayor Cruikshank. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mayor. So finally, um, before we open it up for questions, I'd like to say that while these cameras do provide cutting edge tools in keeping our community safe from wildfire, it still takes all of us to make sure that our communities are, are prepared for a disaster. First of all, learn how you and your neighbors can protect each other from wildfire by actually hardening your homes. This includes simple steps like maintaining a defensible space around your home, keeping your roof and gutters clean, and using fire resistant materials to protect against windblown embers and fire. Everyone should also know your zone. Go to pvpready.gov today and find your evacuation zone, write it down and keep it somewhere. My zone is actually RPV E0180 and I'm gonna remember that. Sign up also for so Alert South Bay, emergency notifications by texting Alert SB to 888-777. And finally, make sure your family has a plan in place for what you'll do when there's an evacuation order that comes down so that your neighborhood and you are ready. Have an emergency kit with the essential items, medication, and your important documents. I'll now open it up for questions. Is there any questions? Okay, well, if there's no questions, then I'd, well, that concludes our press conference for today. Thanks again to Pano AI and, of course, our assembly member Al Murasuchi and our fellow cities that are here today. And I'd like to ask everyone uh, that we've introduced today to come on up and get a group photo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>